Welcome back to Firex Techs. My name is Henry, and this video will be a quick tutorial on how to get Garlic OS 2.0 running on your RG405M or your RG405V. Heads up that this is the first public alpha version, so most likely you will run into bugs. However, because it's a dual boot setup, meaning that you can launch the system into Garlic whenever you want, and when you don't, you just boot it up normally and you can get back to your default setup, whether that's stock Android or Gamma OS. So there's very low risk in trying it. All you need is a spare SD card, download some files, and a few minutes to set it up. If you have used Garlic OS on the RG35XX or used Onion OS on a Mio Mini Plus, you're probably familiar with what I think are the two main benefits of using this. The first being a simplified front end that's easy to set up and use, and the second being the resume function, also known as Game Switcher, which allows you to swap between games quickly without having to worry about saving or loading states. Now, the downsides are you will not have access to systems later than the PS1, so N64 and above will be unavailable. The first link in the description is going to be the Patreon of the creator of Garlic OS, Black Seraph. He has made many great tools for the retro handheld community, and if you want to show your support, think about subscribing to his Patreon. With that out of the way, let's get on with it. For this first step, take an SD card and make sure there's nothing on it that you don't mind losing, as we're going to be formatting it. Go ahead and connect that to your computer. Once you do, you will go to that SD card, right click on it, go to format, and we want to make sure it is set to XFAT as the file system. You can name this whatever you'd like. I will just go ahead and put in garlic OS. And when you're ready, hit start. It'll let you know that we're going to be erasing everything on here. Just click OK. Once that is done, we will have an empty SD card and we will need to get the files. There are three files that we need to download, and I have the links in the description for each of them. So the first link here is for the installer APK file. This is what is actually going to install the app that will allow us to create a bootloader, which will then load Garlic OS from the SD card. We will just click this installer APK file here. It will start the download. When it is done, we can just drag this over to your SD card. The second link in the description will take you to where we need to get the root FS file. The one we want is the ARCH64. We just click this. This one is a little larger than the other one, so it may take a few moments. While that is downloading, we will go to the SD card and make a new folder and just call it boot, all lowercase. We can go ahead and open that up. When the rootfs file is done downloading, we will just drag that onto our SD card in the boot folder. And then we will want to extract it here. Now, you may need to use 7-zip, or if you have WinRAR, whatever you like to use should work here. This may take a couple minutes. Once that is done, you may need to click the refresh button to see it show up. Once you see the rootfs file here, you can go ahead and delete the zip file that we had on there. The third file is the initiator code. It is just marked as init. The way we save this is just right click on the page, go to save as, click save. Once that is done, drag that over to the same boot folder on the SD card. And then we will want to rename this one and remove the dot text. So it should just be I-N-I-T. It'll then prompt you if you want to do this, just say yes. That is everything we need to do on the computer side. You can go ahead and close the web pages and eject your SD card. Now we will switch over to the RG405M. All right, so you can go ahead and put in the SD card into the device, power it on, Currently, I am running the stock Android OS. However, if you are running Gamma OS or Daijisho, this will be the same process. You will just need to go to the app section. We will then go to Files, 
and then we will go down to our SD card, open that. You will see a lot of extra folders here, but we will just scroll down to the bottom until we get to the installer APK and go ahead and select that. It will then ask you to install. It may ask you for permission, which you will have to grant and then click OK. Once it's installed, it'll either ask you to open it or you can go back to your home page and launch it from there. Once you launch it, it'll take just a few moments. If you ever want to uninstall this bootloader, just run this application again. Once it says done, you can go ahead and hit the B button. And now we just want to power the device off. And so the way you would boot into Garlic OS is you will want to hold down the power button and shortly after, maybe one to two seconds, you will then want to start holding down the home button or function button. I'll do that now. One, two. And when the Amber Nick logo comes up, you just let go. And now we are on the Garlic OS. So from here, we have the favorites, library, retroarch, and resume. For the settings, it says menu here. If you click the function button, that will open up the menu where you can change the date and time or the language. Now we do not have any ROMs on here yet. That'll be the next thing we need to do. So let's go ahead and do that. We can just power this off, take out the SD card, put it back in your computer. Now that we have the SD card connected back to the computer, go ahead and navigate to the SD card. You will see we have a lot of extra folders here. Most of these we can get rid of. The ones that we will need to leave are going to be boot, library, retroarch, and we'll leave the installer in case we want to disable the bootloader. Everything else we can just delete to clean this up. From here, if we open up library, it has already installed all the folders for all the different systems. You don't want to change any of the names here. Leave them as is and just add your ROMs to each system. Really quickly, I will just add a couple here. Now, if you need to add BIOS files, you will back out, then we will go to RetroArch and then under System and you will drag them here. Now that we are done with that, we can just eject the SD card. After putting your SD card back into your device, power on the device again like we did before. Hold down the power button, one, two, start holding down the function button, and let go when Ambernick shows up. So as you can see, if we go to the library, we will see the systems for ROMs that I have put on here. We can just launch them from here. As of right now, there is no box art. Again, since this is the first public alpha version, there are gonna be some things missing. However, Black Seraph is very quick at updates, so we should see lots of updates come in. If you start a game from the library and hit the function button while playing, it will save the state and take you back to the game list. If we go back to the main menu and select resume, we can get back to any of the games that we were previously playing and load the state. Also, when playing a game from Resume, hitting the function button takes you right back to the Resume menu to switch to another game. All of the hotkeys are based on holding down the function button. I will go through some of them now. If you hold this down and hit Start, that is a pause. Holding this down and hitting Select will show you the FPS. Holding function and hitting X will bring up the RetroArch menu. R1 is fast forward. L1 is slow motion. R2 is save state. L2 is load state. And holding function with the volume buttons will increase or decrease the brightness. Also from the game menu here, if you hit the function key, you're presented with another menu if you want to start the game from a restarted state, or if you want to add it to favorites. The last thing to note is that there is no sleep mode. When you hit the power button, it will save the state and completely turn off the system. And the next time you boot into Garlic OS, it will load that game in the save state that you were playing when you powered it off. This is not something that I will probably be using all the time, as the main reason I have my RG405M is for Nintendo 64 games. I'm unsure if there are plans to unlock the GPU in future updates, but if that happens, 
then these other systems will start to be accessible. So that about covers it today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or informative, please leave a like, subscribe for more content from FireX Techs, and thank you for watching.